Welcome to the first part of Project Richard Porter, Richard Car Transporter. This is a trailer that I picked up uh, from Gumtree, thanks to my friend Owen. Um, it was at the best price possible. Um, Owen's from Boots Owen channel, by the way. I'll put a link in the description to his channel. But he's the king of the bargain. Uh, and so I've got a trailer. Why do I need a trailer? Well, number one, I'm scrapping what's underneath this beautiful body. The frame of this Z3 is knackered, so I need something to get it to the scrapper because they can't really get in here. It's quite an awkward garage to get to that they can't get in here with the trailer. So I'll need to transport that. Some other bits of the car, some bits of the silver one that are completely rotten. I'll be scrapping those as well. It'd be nice to have something to take those on. And let's be honest, future projects, I'm going to want stuff to move things around. So when my nice Z300S body is on the silver car at the back, I'm going to need to get that to the paint shop to get it all painted. And then, then yeah, like I say, you never know, I might buy something else in the future. So I've got a trailer, it's not a car transporter at the moment, but I want to make it into a car transporter. And the first step today, quick look around, see what needs doing to it, definitely some electrics, but also get this winch fitted so that we can get that car up on here so that Vince who shares this garage with me can get his other project in just here. Quick tour of the trailer, um, it needs a new jockey wheel, I'll measure that and order one, there, I looked them up last night, um, they're about 15 quid for a replacement, not even that necessarily. Um, might put a pneumatic one on, might not, we shall see. Uh, around here generally in good shape, um, needs a bit of a clean up the frame, but there's not really much serious rust, uh, with one exception, one outrigger over there. Over there. Um, the bed's pretty knackered, um, but still solid. Um, yeah, you can walk and jump around on it. Um, so it'll do for its first job of just sticking this car on it. But ultimately I'll replace this bed, maybe with some sort of perforated aluminium um, runners for the car, so you can actually get underneath, um, almost use it like a, a lift. Um, as you can see, there's plenty of space to get in underneath um, so it might actually be quite nice to be able to sort of crawl in under there and uh, and get in stuff it's obviously double axle which is great uh, one of the tires is flat i don't know whether it's just slow puncture um, or whether it actually needs fixing but we'll try putting some air into that so it's easier to move around um, yeah you know cart springs um, not very sophisticated but functional um, need to check the brakes out before it goes back on the road um, and then the only other big thing is the light bar, uh, which is semi-functional. Uh, need to trace some issues with that. So the big plan is to get this really cleaned up. Uh, maybe get those wheels off and get them blasted and powder coated. Um, maybe need to put some fresh tyres on it. Um, sort out the bed. And probably just do a wooden one initially, but we shall see. Um, give all the metal a good clean up. Um, and um yeah make it into a car transporter basically um long term make it might make it really nice but first things first to, in order to get this car on there uh, might take the nice fiberglass panels off here before we try and move it um need to get some ramps sorted um got an idea for that at least temporary ones using uh vince's lifting ramps over there and tilting the trailer up to get it to the right height and then using the winch to drag it on uh, and then we can move it all around and stick it back over here, but up in the air. So this is the winch I bought, a Rhino winch rated at £4,500, plenty for moving a Z3. Um, <laughs> Rhino branded, Europe's number one winch, clearly made in China I would say. Thanks for the stickers, very nice, and some lanyards, very good. Instruction manual, fantastic, um, clip clamp, nice chunky mounting plate, that's all I'll need to go on here somewhere, um, remote controls, nice sealed control unit, yeah, it comes with two wireless remotes, which is quite nice for the price, I paid, I th well I paid £133 including shipping. Which I think is is not too bad. Um, it's got a manual remote as well. All your screws and some little um, jackets or boots for the wiring to keep those covered up. And then the thing itself should be under here. Looks kind of dinky. Um, 
but steel cable, appropriate rating as far as I can tell. Um, you want about, I think, one and a half to two times the weight of the thing you're trying to pull. And there's obviously a difference between standing rating, so pulling something from a standing start and rolling rating. But 4,500 pounds is sufficiently greater than the weight of a Z3. I think this should be good, unless somebody in the comments tells me I'm wrong, but I think it should be fine. Um, avoid cable injury. Keep clear. Yep. Do not want to get injured uh, doing this. So, need to have a think, work out how this is going to fit. Right, I think I have a plan. So, this bit of the trailer is actually pretty rotten. If you get underneath and have a look at the, the actual fundamental structure, there's some surface rust, but actually it's all very solid. But up top, basically where the wood's been and where I guess water has pooled, um, it's rusted away. So my plan is to use this um, box section here to make a sort of L frame, which welds onto the chassis down here, comes up uh, along here. I'm going to cut some of this wood out. Uh, and then the, and I'll put a bracket along here like this for these two bolts here. And then the box itself will come out under the uh, mounting bracket so two bolts go through here from the um, mounting plate into the box and then the four bolts into the winch itself go through these corners here so this will sit sort of like this um, bolted to um, this thick piece of sheet here thick piece of plate here and bolted to um, a horizontal piece of the box, which is quite thick walled as well, which will be welded onto the chassis down here. Uh, and that should give me a pretty good, strong location, I think. A little bit of progress. I've cut out enough space here for, or nearly, I need to trim that a little bit, um, for a piece of box to sit in there. Uh, and then the other piece will come up here. And yeah, so I need to cut this down now to the right sizes, clean up this face and clean up this face here, trim that a little bit back a little bit more, uh, and then I can get my bits of box welded in. Got all my bits cut. Um, need to clean this one up and put some holes in it to, uh, to match up with the holes on there, because it will sit behind there. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll probably drill and tap this. It's not the thickest thing in the world. It'd be nice to put some captive nuts in there, but it's going to be quite tricky. So I think given that it's going to be, have two dirty great, two dirty great bolts here and here holding it, I think drilling and tapping that top one should be sufficient. Um, and yeah, just a bit of welding to go. So I've got my main mount ready to weld on here, um, which will give me a nice firm base to attach to. Slight change of plan though. Um, I reread the instructions and realized that these tabs here are to carry the uh, rope guide uh, rather than being just uh, mounting tabs, which yeah, would be nice actually. It'd be nice to have some location, given that it's gonna be being pulled this way. I like the idea of having some location to mount it that way, but we'll use it as intended. That leaves me with four holes for mounting this. And so what I'm gonna do is just add a couple of tabs on each side of this for these holes here. Um, so I will um, drill some holes for these two, get this bolted up and then mark out the tabs um, drill them, bolt them, and then weld them on. And yeah, then I can attach it. I've done my best to clean up the metal back here. I might go back over it again. Got most of the rot away. Um, I say it's mostly surface stuff, but it's a little bit deeper in some places. I, I still think this chassis is fundamentally very sound. Most of the rot's up top where it's been close to, you know, wet wood, basically. No innuendo. Um, so yeah, some tabs to weld on, 
uh, and then I can weld my mounting plate on. Slight consideration about just of ease of assembly, because obviously you can't get to um, these very easily because the wood's in the way. So what I might do is drill all the way through and we'll put some fairly big holes here and here so that you can get a socket up through and into the captive nuts in the bottom of the winch um, just so that's nice and easy to attach and detach. And I'll probably leave, I'm, part of me is tempted to grind this plate back and just weld it onto here. Um, and I still haven't entirely ruled that out. Um, but let's bolt it for now. Realised I could actually get a captive nut on here uh, without too much work. Um, I drilled a hole here, drilled my 8mm hole here, um, put my bolt in, ran my captive nut in from the bottom, just a, a mild steel nut in from the bottom on, a, uh, on an extension, drilled a hole just here, uh, and then just welded through it uh, into the side of the nut. So I now have a rather warm uh, bolt into a captive nut, uh, which should hold just fine. Um, so that's nice. I just need to do the same thing on the other side now uh, and then weld on my tabs. While I was waiting for some welds to cool, I thought I would just get the wiring sorted, such as it is. It's incredibly straightforward. Four colour-coded wires that go between the control unit and the battery, and the sorry, the control unit and the motor, and the control unit and the battery. There's an, um, a hardware switch um, comes with a handlebar mount. I think this is designed to go on an ATV or similar. Um, but actually, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I could mount it up here somewhere. Um, might be quite useful um, to be able to sort of just manually control it from the front. It's got a nice long cable. I could just as equally mount it sort of around here somewhere. But uh, yeah, I think for now, I'll just um, stick it up here once I've got the uh, once I've got the winch mounted. I'll work it out somewhere up here. Probably going to stick a battery on this trailer um, just to sort of drive the winch, etc., and ensure I'm not running down the car battery. Um, partly because I've just got a few batteries hanging around. Um, might be worth sticking one on here. Won't do that today, um, but I'll hook one up just for testing so we can see that it works. Just doing the last test fit while sounds like a couple of cats have a lot of fun on the roof. Um, it all fits. I uh, might need a little bit of trimming of this edge just to help it sit flat, but I'm pretty confident now that I can do final welds uh, give it a lick of paint and bolt it all up. Fair to say I've gone a bit excessive on the welds. Um, in case of a nuclear blast, all that we left would be cockroaches and this winch mount. Um, but it's on. Um, a little bit of tidying up to do, but it needs to cool first. So I thought I might have a quick look at the wiring and see if I can work out what's going wrong with that. For a start, it feels like there's far too much wire. There's, someone's clearly put a plastic pipe here to feed the wire down but the wire doesn't go down there. It's sort of looped around the chassis at various points, if you can see. Um, so it feels like there's way more wire than is actually needed, and there's clearly some breaks in it somewhere, or just some bad connections, some bad contacts. So I'm going to get the uh, multimeter on it and see if I can work out what's going wrong. Well, <laughs> it's no great surprise that the cable doesn't work. I'll show you in a second. But it's got more joints in than a teenage house party. Uh, and the, uh, the light bar slash number plate mount is held on with string. So I'm going to cut that off and uh, we can pull it all out. Credit where credit's due. It's also held on with silicone. But it's coming off. Obviously, crack lights. Let's do something about that. One light bar and a load of wire that has been joined. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five times. I don't think there's even a length in there that we could cut out and use that will go the whole length of the, uh, of the trailer. So I might just need to replace that. And to be honest, it might make more sense just to replace the whole light bar. Um, but let's just do a quick trace and see what's not working. I think I'm probably just going to junk all this. Uh, the reversing light is held together with tape. 
um, this uh, combination light is completely knackered. And <laughs> I think yellow, white, green and brown are all discontinuous uh, on this cable. So yeah, just not worth trying to save really. Uh, pretty makes more sense to order a complete new light bar uh, or make one up. Um, I do actually have some spare LED lights that I believe are E-marked um, that I originally bought for the Z300 but decided they weren't the right shape. Um, so actually those could go on, they'd look kind of funky. Uh, maybe I'll use those and just clean up this bit of uh, plastic that it all mounts to. We shall see, but yeah, not worth saving really. There we go. Temporarily hooked into the battery. I'll need to change the side of the size of the uh, spades on there so they fit on a on a car battery as opposed to an ATV battery. But yeah, it works. Um, got a little manual control here. Now to do the only real proper test of a winch. <laughs> well, the winch works, even if the casters don't.